In this parametric facade tutorial, I want to show you how you can make this responsive facade. And as you can see, I can change these points and the facade will also change. So I can just move these points again and make this facade a parametric model in Grasshopper. First of all, if you're new to our channel and you want to learn the basics of Grasshopper, you can watch this tutorial up here, which is the introduction to Grasshopper. Okay, let's get started from scratch. And what I want to do is to draw a box here, okay? And we can import this into Grasshopper from the Farms menu and use the BREP to import it, okay? We set this to the box and we can also put the bifocals plugin so you can see the names uh, what i want to do and i have used this technique recently we can move this box a little bit forward so when we just move or change this box uh, our facade will update so we want to move it in the x direction and get this size and what we want to do is to work with this box instead of the main box let's just turn this off and you can see that if i just scale this this will also update okay what we want to do is to work on this four faces on the facade so we can simply go and use the surface and the deconstruct brep And as you can see, we have six faces, and mainly that is zero, one, two, three, and these two surfaces are four and five. So what we want to do is use the item tool and pick the faces. We can give a number, so uh, the default is zero. So what we can do is to zoom in and put this plus. You can see that we have those six surfaces. I'm going to go to the Parms menu and use this surface tool and connect it to the last two surfaces. And these are the bottom and the top of the building. Uh, we can also connect a surface to these four facades and you can work on it. Okay. Uh, to make it as simple as possible, I want to only work with one of those facade, but you can also use this technique for all of these uh, four together. So let's just focus on this one. Now we can go to the Launchbox plugin, and you can download this from our website. So if you just go here and install the Launchbox plugin and reset your Grasshopper, you will have the panels right up here. And what we want to do is to use this one, which is, as you can see here, the staggered quad panels. To divide the surface you can also use the random quad panels or if you want triangle panels but th this technique best works on the surfaces for uh, which are four-sided something like this because we're going to use the uv to uh, make a portion of that surface for the facade so we can make the facade parametric so let's just do this and go to the staggered panel give this to the surface and now we can divide this with the uv division give it a number Let's increase this one, and here we go. So you can see that we have this on the facade. And let's just split those surfaces of the facade into three of them. So we have this one, and the rest is here, and we have the top and the bottom, and we can turn off everything. Okay, here it goes. Uh, now what we want to do is to, I want to show you how you can make that parametric facade with these quad panels. So let's just define two point attractors. And if you don't know what point attractor is, I'm also going to put another video up here, which we have worked with point attractors and talked about this. It's a really a great tutorial to learn the basics. So what we want to do is to define two point attractors. Right click, set multiple points, and I'm going to put them right down here. And if you have the display and the gumballs on, we can just move them a little bit up, one for here and another one here. You can also add multiple point attractors. On that tutorial, if you would just watch the tutorial which I just put in the card section, uh, 
what we have done is to find the center of those geometry we want to uh, put the tractor effect on it. So what we want to do is to find the area, the centroid of that, and that point will represent this surface. Now we can just uh, compare those centroids with these point attractors, and we have talked about this, so I'm not going to, again, uh, teach you about this, so if you want, you can uh, watch the tutorial. But uh, the fastest method is to use the CP point, the closest point. Okay, let's just type this again and use this closest point. And be, be aware that we don't want the closest points. That was for another tutorial which we made the structure. So now we want that closest point. So let's just use the CP point. And we explained that the grid. Of the points will go to the point and the point attractors will go to the cloud and that means those points will search for the point attractors and find the nearest of them and give the distance out that's what we need so you can give the attractors to the cloud the grids to the point and now we have the distance which we will use to make these panels smaller or bigger so what i want to do i uh, let's go to the surface utility and isotrim so let's just bring this and connect those panels to this isotrim. And what we want to do is uh, assume this panel. We want to make this smaller from the edges. So we will have something like this. Uh, but for the height, we want the full height. But you can also change that if you want. So remember, we have to work with the isotrim. So this is going to be the U direction. This is the, the this is going to be the V direction. And I'm going to go to the math and domain and use this construct domain 2. And what that means that if you want to uh, learn about this, I'm going to also put an evaluate surface to know why we reparameterize things if you don't know. So this is going to be a little bit advanced, but for those who don't know, you can watch the evaluate surface. So we have to reparameterize this and make this from uh, something u minimum to u maximum. So if I give this a number, let's check this out. There's a number between 0 and 1 because we reparameterized the surface. If I change that, you can see that we are basically selecting a portion of that surface by giving numbers. The 1 is in the end of the edge and this is the first edge. So you can see that we can just offset basically something like an offset on those panels. Let's just increase them. So, uh, okay, I'm going to increase these numbers. So, it looks better. Okay, here we go. So, we want to play with these numbers. To make this happen, let's assume, let's just draw this. Let's assume that this is the main panel. I'm going to make a blue panel also here, which is inside the surface. And assume that this is zero and this is one. And this is zero and this is one, we don't need the height. If we want to make the same distance from the start and the end, if this is zero, if this is a 0 0.2, perhaps this is a 0 0.8, right? So what we can do is to simply type uh, expression one minus x, which is x is this number. So remember, we have this number and we can just simply make the second one by uh, make an expression 1 minus x. So what we want to do is to use the remap tool. Again, we have these distances which is not between 0 and 1 and we want to scale them between 0 and 1. And we have talked about this remap thing. You can also download the remap tool and we'll put it in the website. You can also download that. So what I want to do is to use this remap. You can throw it in your canvas and it will be installed and remap this between zero because some of those bricks are going to be complete covered by zero to one, right? This is going to be zero and one minus zero is going to be one. And some of them are going to be, if we just draw this, maybe 0.3, to 0 0.7. I guess the color is not really good here, but what we want to do is to say 0 to the maximum offset. You know that we can't give this a 0 0.5 because one, 0 0.5 will just go straight at the middle and we don't have any offsets. So remember, we have to make this 
from 0 to maybe 0.45% if we want to make it really small. But let's just do this and give this to the panels. So what we want to do is to give this to the U minimum and U maximum. And as we just talked about this, make this 1 minus X. Here we go. We can turn off the panels. And we have that offset. You can see that this is a really too high number, so we can just decrease it. So those panels sit on each other, and we have an OK results. Now let's just play with those point attractors, and you can see that this is going to be updating the results. If you want to make this for all of those uh, facade surfaces, so if I just use the Shift key and give that to here, the first thing uh, I suggest you do is to flatten these panels so all of them are going to be in one group. And then you're good to go. So if you don't know again what flatten means, I'm also going to put another video up here which um, talks about flatten, graph, simplify, and those things. And now you can see that this is really cool. We have made this in all of the facades. So let's just bring this a little bit forward, zoom in, and maybe go to the artistic view so you can see that. And as you can see, there are smaller and bigger. To fix this view problem, because we don't see the back, what we want to do is to make the box also a little bit smaller so we can see the panels fine. So what I want to do is to go to here, which we just move the box, and scale this a little bit down from its centroids. So let's just type volume to find its volume and give a scale really near to one. So I guess 99% is fine. It's going to make this box a little bit smaller. So if I just bake this into layer one, let's just turn everything off and bake these panels into layer two. You can see it's going to be in the front. And let's just look at it from the top. You can see that it has a gap between those panels and the main, the main box. So you can also look at this. Let's just bring this a little bit in the X direction, move it, and look at this. You can see it's really beautiful. And you can see that those panels are uh, changing ba based on those point attractors. This is a really good tutorial if you want to make a, a conceptual design thing to show how the building facade works. The best practice is that it, you can connect this to optimization or those things. And we also have talked about this in the course, the point attractor thing, uh, making those bricks. So again, uh, you can go to our website and download the Launchbox plugin and uh, also the remap tool and make this uh, parametric facade in Grasshopper. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel. And you can also watch uh, something that is related to this video, that corner, and see you next time.